name is Davis Guggenheim. I'm in my office. Jump through it and land on one. Or we make all our documentaries. Look at this. That's not going to work great. My father made documentary films. By the age of five, I was on shoots with him all over the country making documentaries, so I got the bug. The last project that we finished was a project called Teach, which is on network television. And we followed four teachers all across the country, so we had crews everywhere. We chose a C300, and it ended up being a very bold choice. Who would have thought a primetime television show could be shot? on a camera that can do this with one hand. That's amazing. And they loved how it looked. They were just like, this is gorgeous. All right, guys, good morning. How do you get cameras in classrooms where you're not going to disrupt 30 students and a teacher? And that boom comes in, and the kids look up at the furry thing. Or a camera comes in, and they get self-conscious. So we use a 70 to 200. I'd frame a close-up, and it's so good that I would just pretend I'm not shooting. I'd, I'd push record and just stand over here. We could be the opposite side of the classroom, be on a 200 millimeter lens, and be this close on their face, and be in their eyes, and capture these big, intimate moments. Can somebody tell oh, me? No, 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 no. Oh, I got down right. And then when you can just sort of slowly rock it into focus and capture that one plane of focus, that's money right there. In this movie particularly, those very long lenses, they're very sharp. The narrow depth of field captured this very cinematic look. The bouquet, when you're in that narrow depth of field, is gorgeous. More and more, my two lenses are a 28 prime and a 50 prime. And those are the things that are in my bag. You want to pull the focus? Just I could shoot a whole scene with both of them and be totally happy. It's wide enough without being so distorted that you notice it, but you can get someone very close and someone very far and still have everyone in the frame. For a long time, you'd have to bring your hand all the way around. This is just so intuitive and so soft. You can see it on the lens. In very low light, it's tack sharp. I'm not Mr. Techie. There you go. A guy like me can set it up and shoot it himself. And sometimes that's what it takes in a documentary is to be able to be there by yourself with a character. This allows for the DP to shooting and for me to grab it from him and start doing what I want with it. The camera's no longer in this territory that I can't access. We've done everything. We've put it on rigs, very long lenses, very short lenses. We've used Steadicam. My favorite is to take everything off of it, everything, and put a 50 on it and open it wide. I can be talking to a character. I say, really? That's really interesting. And I can do this. And here I am looking at you, and I can hold it for half hour rock steady, which for me is very important because my movies are a lot about connecting with people and being intimate with people. If there's a crew of people between me and this character, it doesn't work. You have a camera that shoots very easily at 800. It looks beautiful at 1600 and even higher up. We use this very body with this very lens, and I'm shooting at 1600 at a 1-3. There's absolutely no lights in the car. He's very dark-skinned. I'm like, uh, this will never work. But then a traffic light comes by, and it's crisp, it's clear, there's no noise, and it's absolutely gorgeous. The Dream Is Now is a film we did about immigration reform. The pressure was on us to deliver this movie within a matter of weeks, to release it at a very short time, to convince Congress to act. We are running and gunning. We're in wildly different locations. You get 80 minutes on the 32 gig card, and you get 160 minutes on the 64 minute gig. The format is so simple and easy. You take a car out of this camera, 80 minutes of footage on it, and within less than a minute, that footage is in the avid. I can work on that footage tonight. We shoot in C-Log. It's a little bit of a leap of faith in editorial because in C-Log, the image is gonna be flat. The wonderful thing about that is you concentrate on your storytelling and then when you take it out of C-Log and you go into the color time and you're like, oh, look at all that depth, look at all that range, look at all that contrast. Suddenly you have a brand new movie. When we put it up on the big screen, when we have some of the best color timers in the world looking at this stuff, they're like, who shot this? I'm like, well, we did. That's a pretty good feeling. It's an amazing time right now for documentaries. 
The equipment has gotten faster, easier, less expensive. This little studio has a total means of production for what I do. Good, that's really good. We shoot everything, we edit everything, everything happens here. You just could not have imagined that five years ago. And this is a big part of it. If my father were alive today, he'd be very jealous. <laughs>